All terrors everywhere, do we have a treat for you. As part of Horror's Hellraiser Legacy season, we thought we'd take a trip down memory lane when I had the absolute pleasure of catching up with the man who always makes a good point, Doug Bradley. And where better to meet the master of malevolence himself than London's darkest, London's most depraved, that's right, London's dungeon. Enjoy. We'll tear your soul apart. I started thinking about playing him. I was giving myself shorthand that I'm playing the monster in the horror film. Now, really, I'm not. Really, the monsters in the film are Frank and Julia. My nerves are beginning to work again. Good. One more, maybe two. Not again. To heal me completely. Pinhead is like an impartial... He's like a judge, an impartial referee in the proceedings. You know, he's very much bound... By rules. The box. You opened it. We came. It's just a puzzle box! Oh no. It is a means to summon us. So he's not like a boogeyman who's, you know, hiding around the corner with the stiletto blade waiting to jump on you. Even when you confront him, the first thing he wants is a good conversation. There is a secret song at the center of the world, Jeremy, and it sounds is like races through flesh. I don't believe you. Oh, come. Oh, you can hear its faint echo right now. Tell us about your relationship with, with Clive Barker. How did all that begin? I met him in rehearsals for the school play. Uh, at school? Uh, yeah, oh. at, at Quarry Bank School in, in Liverpool. I guess that, that moment probably kind of turned my life upside down. Um, to a degree. He was an extraordinary character uh, even then and he was already then at school writing, directing, starring in and hand drawing the posters for um, his own plays. It was kind of a seamless link all the way through from those early school days into Hellraiser. Oh. Did he always have you in mind for Pinhead? How did you get involved? Honestly, I don't know whether he always had me in mind for Pinhead. Uh, maybe he asked a dozen, dozen other actors who were, who were busy and said, Oh, all right, I'd better use Doug. <laughs> Shall we begin? I could be wrong here, but I read that you were a little bit kind of concerned at first about playing um, Pinhead, no. Um, no. and you weren't no, no, going no. to do it. <laughs> no. Is that not true? Well, it, it, it sort of is, but I, I kind of regret I ever said this, because it follows me around like crazy now, and it's growing. Now, when Chris Figg produced the Hellraiser movie, when he rang me to formally ask me to do the film, as it, he did say, look, there are these two parts there. There's, there's this character in latex with pins in his head who's on screen for less than 10 minutes with no name or there's one of the removal men that your daughter uh-huh got her mother's looks her mother's dead there was a brief moment where i was thinking well if i'm going to be in a movie maybe i should be in a movie where people can see my face so when i go to auditions i can say well i was just in that movie hellraiser play you know I don't think that conversation in my head lasted more than two minutes. Don't think I'd be sitting here now discussing my role as re removal man number one. <laughs> no. So how does it feel to be a horror icon? I mean, you've, surely you know you've made it when someone says, I want to make a doll out of you. It's very cool. And, I, and um, uh, Nico had done a fantastic job with the, with the dolls, with the exception of the version that has my own head, that you can, you can take Pinhead's head off and put my head on. I think I look like Phil Collins. <laughs> do you have any of the dolls, Pinhead I do. dolls? How many? I've got all of them. <laughs> well, they sent them Perks. to me. <laughs> they sent them to me. It was like Christmas, you know? You haven't got a like, creepy life-size one in your bedroom, like, and I'm, overlooking? I'm, I've got the 18-inch sound-activated version. He sits up on a shelf. What does he say? He doesn't say anything. It's permanently switched off. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think the public have uh, warmed to Pinhead? I don't know if you've done this, but on YouTube, there's whole comedy sketches with the Pinhead character in normal household situations. People send me links all the time. You should check this out. And they're very, very funny, and I get a, I get a big kick out of them. And, of course, I've been on The Simpsons. I've been on uh, South Park. I've been on Family Guy. Oh, I can't sorry. quite see Pinhead becoming a national treasure. He's not quite up there with Biggins yet, is he? I don't think. I am the way. People love asking me about Pinhead because, you know, you have 
brought that character to life so well and people do love him. Um, but do you ever get sick of talking about him? Do you ever think, OK, I've had enough of Pinhead, I'm not Pinhead? Uh, that's it. I'm sorry, I'm not ask answering any more questions about Pinhead. I'm sick to death of it. It's just all the time, day in, day out. Um, I was worried I... about you <laughs> saying that. <laughs> no, no, look, I am proud of the Hellraiser movies. I'm absolutely cool with the fact that no matter what I do or don't do for the rest of my career, Pinhead is always going to follow me around, and I have absolutely no problem with that. Oh, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. I have been told by a mutual friend of ours, Oops. actually, um, that you hate the question, how many pins did they use in Hellraiser's mask? But I'm going to have to ask you, because I have to... Do you know how many pins were used in your mask? No, I should do. Um, Gary does. I could phone him now and ask him. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and he always took one off. People don't know this, but it j always before we, before we went on set, he'd just give me the once over and then he'd just go and take one of the pins off. Nobody ever noticed. <laughs> your makeup process was it a bit of a nightmare or how did you feel early on it was about five or six hours it speeded up a bit um, to about three hours there is a world record an hour and nine minutes it's quite a long and funny story and he was very thrilled um, that it was an hour and nine minutes wow. for and all the was, pinhead makeup that is he was, really impressive. he was going to going to have two two t-shirts made <laughs> one for me saying I was 69 by Gary Tunnicliffe and one for him saying, I 69 Pinhead. Oh, I want that one. <laughs> <laughs> Said before, you know, acting always goes with the inside out, outside in. Absolutely outside in with Pinhead. The first time I had the makeup on, I sat in front of the mirror. I've disappeared. Lips, ears, eyes. Everything else is gone. And in, in 20 minutes, sitting in front of the, the mirror, just playing with the makeup. I, I, prob I found 99% of what I was going to do with Pinhead there and then. You had to come through the window of her mind. Hellraiser 3, you got to play um, two characters, so you really got to exercise yourself as an actor. Now, we're going to hell. Ladies first. The night we were doing the dual thing, I started out as Elliot, and halfway through the night, I had to go and switch into the pinhead costume. So I've, I'm, I'm feeling very, very good about myself in my army uniform. Plus, I've, I've spent five minutes max in makeup. Yes. And I, I walked onto set, and over there is pinhead. Now, I'd never seen that before. I'd never seen pinhead, and I and I didn't like it. <laughs> it was, and that was, I think, was the point where I realised how much uh, I got possessive of the character. It was, it was me, it was mine. Of course, there'd been a long, li long line of people uh, during the filming trying to convince the first AD that they looked really a lot like me to get the gig of playing Pinhead opposite me. What is next for you? You. Will there be more Pinhead? Do you want to kiss him goodbye? What's the future for Doug Bradley? Hellraiser, I honestly don't know. It is now six years since we shot the last Hellraiser film. And of course, over the last two years, there's been talk about the Hellraiser remake, about which I know nothing, and I'm not trying to hide anything from anyone. I know nothing. In two years, nobody's picked up a phone and said anything to me about it one way or the other. I know as much as everybody else knows. So if you had the opportunity so if, to do If they ask me to do it, I'll do it. But I, I have absolutely no idea. It's a pleasure to meet you and good luck with everything in the future. Emily, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Thank you.